not all uncertainties are of the same type. So there are three main types of uncertainties. Um, the most common type is systematic uncertainties. Um, and those are the things I talked about in the last video. These are things that are limitations of the device or the scale of the operator or um, interference from things that you can't control. Okay. Um, the next kind of uncertainty is um, statistical uncertainty. And these are the, the types of uncertainties that come from just doing the same measurement over and over and getting slightly different answers each time. Okay, so um, you've all experienced in your life that if you do the same measurement multiple times, you, you know, in some cases you get a different answer each time. And so by doing it 10 times or 100 times and averaging them, you feel more confident that you have a correct value. So statistical uncertainties are specifically the kind where repeated trials um, give better results. Okay. Systematic uncertainties don't. So if, for instance, your tape measure is just 3% longer than it should be, um, doing more measurements will not fix that in any way. You'll keep measuring 3% too long, no matter what, and that's never going to change as you do more. For statistical things, as you do more and more, you get better and better data. Okay. Um, the third kind is not going to be as important for us, but it does show up, and this is theoretical uncertainty. Um, and so theoretical uncertainties show up when you're not sure what to expect, or you're not sure how to interpret your results. Um, so the sorts of places where um, theoretical uncertainties show up um, are, for instance, in modern physics. If you're doing an experiment and you're not sure what sorts of particles might exist or what their masses are or like what the correct way to do a calculation is, then you might have some theoretical uncertainty on your results. Um, another case where these show up is in some modern um, experiments, we have to do just lots and lots of calculations, and that's part of doing it. And at some point, we have to stop doing the calculations and we never get it exactly right. So um, that could be a source of theoretical uncertainty if like, we just don't have an exact way to do it and we have limited computing power, we have to stop at some point. Okay, so for us, um, I think by far the most interesting one are the systematic uncertainties. Um, statistical uncertainties will also show up um, from time to time in what we're doing. Um, typically, what you want to do in an experiment is do multiple trials. And the reason you want to do multiple trials is because of the statistical uncertainty. Um, but you don't want to do an infinite number of trials. You know, you have to stop at some point. There's a limit to what you can do. And so typically what we want to do um, is do enough trials. So the statistical uncertainty is smaller than your systematic. You know, so to just give you an example, if you're doing a measurement and there's a 10% systematic uncertainty from things that you can't control, but your statistical uncertainty is 30%, well, you should keep doing more measurements until you get your statistical uncertainty down to um, maybe you know, 5% or something so that the systematic uncertainty is more important. I spelled statistical wrong. Statistical. Okay. Um, okay, so once you have your uncertainties, systematic and statistical, um, what we want to do often is interpret them. And remember, the interpretation for an uncertainty is that you're pretty sure the true value is within the range. Okay, so um, if I do a measurement, which has some value, and there's some range of uncertainties like this, and then I do some other measurement with some range of uncertainties that looks like this, I would say that these do not agree. Um, the measurements do not agree. Or you might say they are inconsistent, for instance, some other way of using essentially that same idea. Um, if, on the other hand, you have these two measurements, like maybe I have the same first one, but maybe the second one had a much larger uncertainty range, like this. Um, well, now I would say that these two measurements do agree because um, the black one is entirely inside the range of the green one. So these measurements agree. Okay, and we can do the same thing if there's like an accepted value that we're trying to compare a measurement to. So for instance, if I do this measurement, but I know that the true value should be like, let's say here, or um, perhaps I know the true value should be here. Um, I would say for the blue one that the measurement is consistent with that, um, the purple one is not. So um, we can use the uncertainty range to determine if um, our measurements are consistent with either each other or with some accepted value. Notice that we never want to adjust the uncertainties after the fact. So the uncertainties are determined by the systematic and statistical um, things that the considerations that you made independently of what the results look like. So just because the true value falls outside the range, for instance, you should never increase your uncertainties because of that. Um, just like if the uh, measurement happens to be super, super close to the true value, you should not decrease your uncertainties because of that. Um, both cases are fine. You just need to interpret your results correctly. Say that your results agree or disagree with what you expected.